All right. All right, so welcome to Spacious Side Body. It's pretty much what it sounds like. We're gonna get into our side bodies today. Um, has anybody here taken anatomy and physiology or an anatomy class ever in their life? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one of the first things you learn in anatomy is how to orient yourself to the body. And we orient ourselves on planes, just like a map or a graph. So there's what's called the sagittal plane, which is front and back. And then there's the coronal plane, which is this one, the crown, the aura. And then there's the transverse plane, which is like this. Chops you right through the middle. And a lot of what we do in yoga asana is in one plane. Can you guys guess which plane it is in? Yeah, it's in the sagittal plane. So I'll give you an example. Up, fold, up, back, down, up, back and back to the front, right? So a lot of that is sagittal. And one, there's a few different ways, you know, I think in, in a very genuine way, yoga is medicine. Yoga can be medicine, it can be medicinal, but it's also movement. And we hold these two truths to be, to be um, simultaneously <coughs> true. So one of them is motion is lotion, and the other is that we can injure ourselves through athletics and movement, right? We all know that if you have experienced any biomechanical injury in your life, chances are pretty good. It could have been a, a crash, but it could have also been that you tried chopping wood once when, when you were 21 and you'd never lifted an ax before in your life and suddenly that didn't feel so good on that arm. So it could be all sorts of things. But yoga has that quality of repetition sometimes to it. At least what I notice these days in group classes and so I'm hoping today to really get out of the sagittal plane and to not do any Vinyasa. Does that sound okay? Yes. <laughs> Party time. <laughs> All right. I am so, so thrilled and honored to be here on every level. I'm, like I said, a practicing physical therapist in Washington, D.C. I, I probably see patients about 20 hours a week. I teach somewhere between six and nine yoga classes a week. I lead retreats around the world, and I have an online yoga anatomy mentorship. So I have a lot of stuff going on and I'll remind you of all that at the end. And I also made these funky Keep Yoga Weird t-shirts that I'm selling. So if anybody wants one, they're 25 bucks. I'll, I'll uh, give you the opportunity at the end of class. Um, so, all right, let's get started. Take a comfortable seat. And let's take a, a Sukhasana, a sweet, easy seat. You can have one ankle in front of the other And then switch the ankle up so it's the one that you're not accustomed to having in front. And I'd like you to keep your right arm really, really heavy and bring your left ear towards your left shoulder. You can allow your eyes to close if you'd like. And if you wish, you can bring your left arm up and tickle your opposite ear and invite the arm to be heavy. There's no need to yank on your head in this position. Just invite the arm that's down to be heavy and hang down. And invite the arm that's up to be heavy and heavy. Put a little slack in your jaw. Welcome to turn up and down a little bit. I like that. <laughs> and slowly release this arm. Rise up and invite your right ear towards your right shoulder. Left arm heavy. If you wish, the right arm can come up, tickle your opposite ear. The right ear be heavy. Yay, Adrian Pierre, so lovely. Again, invite a little bit of space between the top teeth and the bottom teeth. Both arms heavy. Maybe look down a little, maybe look up a little. Moving at just the sweetest, tiniest piece, good for you. 
release the arms, rise up to center, and then walk your left hand out all the way to the side, right arm reaches up, elbow bends and lean over. Invite in a full breath into the side of your body. And while you're breathing in, you might even feel a lifting of the ribs away from the pelvis. And exhale, make yourself get longer. On your inhale, rise up, come up to center, and left arm to the sky, wiggle your right fingertips away. Keep those sitting bones rooted in the floor, rooted in the ground. Full breath into the side of your body. And again, let your head be heavy here. There's nothing to hold up. You can shake it out a little. No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. Inhale, rise to center. And make your Durga tiger claws, okay? And just draw from your belly and spin towards your left as far as you can go. Bring your right hand to the outside of your left knee or cut your knee or catch whatever you can catch. And then this arm that's out, reach that straight up to the sky. The left arm up to the sky by your ear and then lean away from the knee that you caught. So you're leaning on the diagonal. And you might even look down this time and lean a little bit towards the front right hand corner of your yoga mat. So you're almost more on the diagonal. Find the angle that's really, really sweet for you so either leaning right over or a little bit to the front. Inhale back and up. And let's take it into our Durga arms again, also known as cactus arms. And spin from the muscles that surround right around the spine and the obliques and the intercostals. Let the muscles of the region do the work. And then please take your left hand over to that outer right knee. Right arm straight to the sky, root down and get tall. And then exhale and lean. Invite your head to be heavy, lean it over, full breath. And again, you might even lean a little towards the front of your yoga mat, the front uh, left hand corner in this case. And back by your ear. Inhale, rise it up. Press your palms together. And then pull forward into, um, into child pose. Let this be a fairly wide knee child's pose. Yeah. Lift up just a little bit, like you're looking up to see what's going on. And then walk your hands all the way over to, if you were lying down on a clock, to 10 o'clock on the dial. Lift up just the tiniest bit and reach your arms a little bit further forward. And then sit back down. And on your inhale, lift up just the tiniest bit. Walk your hands half an inch forward. Take the top hand, or the one that's closest to the center of your yoga mat, the right one, interlace it over your left fingers and sit down again, inviting a heaviness in your hips and a full breath into the right side body. Some of you will feel comfortable resting your forehead between your arms. Some of you will be able to easily rest the head down to the floor, but you do want your arms to be active here. You do want the upper arms to squeeze together or else you might not get quite to the sensation of the side body. So really allow your hands to go off your yoga mat. A couple of you guys are, are still kind of on the yoga mat and you can actually come fully, fully off of it. Big breath. Exhale, all air out. And inhale to center. And please walk all the way to the other side. So in this case, we're walking towards two o'clock on the dial hips back, lift up a little bit, maybe interlace your left fingers over your right and sit down again. Active arms. 
and maybe lift up just a little bit. Wiggle the hands one inch forward or half an inch forward. Sit down and rest your head on something. Walk yourself back towards center. Come onto hands and knees now for a table pose. And just bring the right ear towards the right hip. Inhale to center and then left ear towards the left hip. So instead of doing cat and cow, my guess is that you have done cat and cow a few times already this weekend, <laughs> perhaps, just a bit, just a little bit, just explore this other dynamic outside of the sagittal plane, so side to side, coronal plane. There's a temptation to look over that shoulder in the direction you're turning, and there's a temptation to let your hips fall, but I would ask that you experiment with, and feel free to do with whatever feels really truly joyous to you, but I ask that you experiment with the idea of just cinching up one side waist. And that means your ear also. And then moving to center, your head stays pretty neutral. Your neck stays pretty neutral. But your right ear is moving towards the right shoulder and towards the right hip. And then inhale to center and cinch it up on the other side. Avoid the temptation to look. Try that out and if you like some other version of this, go for whatever feels great for you. Inhale back to center and start to pivot on your right knee. So your foot's going to come off your yoga mat. Straighten your left leg. Press back through that heel. Drop the heel down. Left arm to the sky. And reach up and over, all the way over your head towards the front of your yoga mat. Create a long stretch here. Back leg is straight. Head can be heavy, ear can hang. Take three more breaths right here. And then the next exhale, lower back down. Take it over to the other side. Please pivot on your left knee, a little bit off your mat. Straighten your right leg back behind you. And then reach that right arm by your ear. So this, there's an action here, right? You're reaching out through your fingertips. If you have any discomfort in your shoulder and that's preventing you from bringing the arm by the ear, you can also take the arm straight down in front of you and wiggle it forward. Gorgeous side body breath. <laughs> Full breath in and out. Please settle your hand right back down to the floor and come right back into the table. Curl your toes under. Let your knees go to the side. Walk your hands back. And you can come through Malasana. This shape isn't easy for everybody. So if that shape's not easy for you, then come up into football punching shape. And then from here, no, that's its official name. And bring your knee, hands to your knees. And start to roll all the way to stand. And towards the very front of your yoga mat. And you inhale, reach the arms up. Catch hold of your right wrist with your left hand. You get really tall. There's a tendency with the side bends to let them also be back bends, especially in the yoga community. So if you know that you have this tendency of low ribs out, then knit them in right now, almost like you're doing a hollow body or a Arda Navasana, and you're gonna lean, draw the ribs in, and just go as far as you can in this direction. So your hands have to go in the other direction. The top arm is being pulled lightly by the bottom arm. So Jennifer, you can switch the, yeah, exactly. Inhale, 
inhale up. Now you're taller on one side. So get up the other way, stretch hold of your left wrist, get really tall, firm through the legs, and lean over. You'll notice that as my upper body leans over, that looks gorgeous. Yeah. The hips go to the other side to counter it a little bit. But both legs are staying straight and rooted. Beautiful. Would you like to model at all? Not today. Inhale up. And the next up is fold. Inhale halfway up. And just walk your hands all the way over to your left. Really, really simple side twist. And if the floor is out of reach, you can A, bend your knees, or B, I like this even better, just take your hands to the outer left leg. Try to keep the right cheek pressing back evenly. And then inhale, walk through center, fingertips on the floor. Or to the outer right leg, wherever it lands. left leg to the back of your yoga mat. Please lower down through the knee. So we don't have a, a whole lot of extra cushion here. So you can always roll to the front of your kneecap. Inhale, rise up. And then again, catch your left wrist. Right hand catches the left wrist. Lift up, scoop your low ribs in, and lean over to your right. So you guys are going to be back to center for a moment, press your palms together of your heart, and just experiment with this next move. So the rib cage, your thoracic spine, the, the relationship of one vertebra to the next, they rotate pretty easily in the thoracic spine. So a lot of your rotation actually comes from here. And then in the lumbar spine, there's not a lot of rotation. So in your low back, those five vertebrae, they kind of hit each other the way that the facet joints are shaped. So the lumbar spine is really good at side bending, or it should be. When you go into a lot of twists, believe it or not, there's a deep side bending element to it, or at least that's the theory that I'm going to propose, and you can experiment, see what you think, okay? So let's try a pure twist, quote unquote pure twist, because everything in the body is a little wonky, yeah? So you've got your right knee in front, left knee down, and you're gonna press your palms together over your heart and just rotate to the right. Rotate to this beautiful orange tapestry for most of us. And then park your elbow to the outside of the knee. That's a pretty pure twist. A little bit of side bend. And then inhale up and back. And let's add the arms. So reach your left arm up. You can do like this if you need to, to make sure it's the left. Catch hold of your wrist, lean over to your right. And then inside of the side bend, press your palms together over your heart and dive the elbow to the outside. So, um, yeah, go, feel free to do the side bend again. Like go ahead and lean into the side, that way towards the tapestry and bend, go into it. Difference? Yeah? <laughs> no? no it difference. definitely felt different enough that I thought maybe I was doing it wrong. <laughs> the first time? Yeah. <laughs> no, you not, just get more of it from your side body, yeah. from the lumbar spine. Okay. So if you lift up and over and then you twist, yeah. you'll get a little bit more space. Like it should that? be. It should feel a little more like two puzzle pieces fitting together. Rather than like when you're trying to make two puzzle pieces fit together. Okay. Yeah, should feel just a little easier. Okay. Exhale, please fold over your front leg. Wiggle this foot out. Ardha Hanumanasana, half splits. And then let's get funky with it. Let's lean to the right. So walk your hands beyond the right side. Keep pulling the right leg back. In an ideal world, we'd have blocks under our, our hands right here. So since we don't have blocks or very vast majority of us don't, feel free to keep your hands up on the leg as needed. Ah. 
active leg, active foot. Inhale, walk your hands back to center. Please bend into your front knee, curl your back toes under, step into the front of the mat. Halfway up, exhale, hold it down. Please step your right leg all the way to the back. So right leg down. Roll to the front of your right kneecap. And then inhale, rise up. Invite your low ribs to draw back. Stay connected. Breathe into the back of your body. We want our low back to do some of the movement for us. So we're going to catch the right wrist with the left hand. And lean over to the left, to the same side that your knee is bending. about teaching yoga everybody has their arm in the air right now but if you teach yoga wave your arm a little bit a couple of you guys yeah so if you teach yoga you probably have experienced this this phenomenon of yoga teachers it's insanely easy to mix up right and left it's called <laughs> public displays of dyslexia <laughs> not to trivialize dyslexia but it's it's, it's a very real phenomenon so if I mix anything up, just let me know, or if you feel confused, look around. So inhale, back to center. And then again, palms together of your heart. We have the left leg forward. Scoop the low ribs in and just twist. Just get it all from the spine, all from the twist, that is. And try to park your elbow just from the twist. Elbow parks to the outside. Try the other version, so come on up. Inhale up, let's go back to that gorgeous side bend. So you're gonna lean over to your left. Then press your palms, and then see where the elbow lands. And then stack shoulder over shoulder. Did I hear a wow? Yeah. Yummy, nice. Huge difference. Huge difference. I'm thrilled. Settle your hands down by the side of your front leg. Straighten your front leg. Ardha Hanumanasana. So, yeah, use your blocks if you have them. If I had a good novel, I would use the novel. I would use anything. Well, I would use my water bottle if it was of that nature. Walk your hands over to the outside of this straight leg. And again, take a deep breath. And exhale. Melt it down just a little bit. You might walk your hands even a little further to the side. Please inhale and come back to center. And then wiggle your front foot, your left foot, all the way over to the right side of your yoga mat. Walk your hands out in front of you a little bit and tuck your back leg in like this. You're doing a curtsy. So knee tucks into knee pretty well here. And you can have a lot of space between your feet. If you can see my feet, I have more than 12 inches of space. And then inhale, stand up. Back leg is going to go straight, maybe even on the outer edge of the back foot. And the front knee is going to stay in a deep bend. Sweep the arms up, catch hold of your right Wrist. Get tall, scoop your ribs, lean to your left. This is Krishna's crescent, and I'll mirror you guys. So, yeah. So the outer edge of your back foot. Move your hips. Bend your front knee, but straighten your back leg. And you can widen the space between your feet to create more sweetness here. Lean forward just a little bit, like you're rounding your spine, like you're going into cat pose. And inhale, rise it up, release, and other side. The left leg tucks behind, right leg in front, and you want to cross way up high. This is called the, the P dance, <laughs> right? When you gotta go, like most of us on the drive here, right? <laughs> inhale, bend the front knee, reach up, and this time you're gonna catch your left wrist 
your right hand. Create a nice little half bracelet and lean. Scoop your low ribs in. Eventually get a little bit of the rounding in your back, a little bit of that cat shape. Active through both legs. Soft expression on the face. Pyramid pose, which is forward fold from here. 
But we're gonna start with that side bend and see if it feels any different than usual. So left arm to the sky. Lean over to your right. Keep the pelvis square. And then lean, lean, lean. There's a delicious cookie over there. Or one of those like chocolate truffles with exotic ingredients. <laughs> So your hand should be landing on the opposite foot. The right leg should be in front, left leg in back. <laughs> Forgive me. Back heel is rooted. And then from here, you can actually enjoy, some of us may be able to enjoy hands to the floor, and others may want to experiment with revolved triangle. So right shoulder blade back, right arm beams to the sky, hips back all corners of the feet rooted. Crown of the head reaches forward. Gaze can be down. Feel free to look down towards the floor. Feel free to bend into your front knee. Good. Exhale, both hands to the floor. And step back to downward facing dog, or if you cannot stand the idea of down dog, step forward with your left and then back with the right. So if you're in down dog, please step forward with the left. It's about two thirds of the way. It doesn't have to be as much of the distance as the high lunge. And then inhale, both legs are straight. Start with your hands on your hips. So if you have your hands on your hips, hips are squared, chest lifts, right arm to the sky. Go ahead and side bend over to your left. Straighten the front leg, and then reach for that delicious, like, maca, cacao, goodness. Exhale, hand lands where it lands. If you're feeling really imbalanced here, you have the option to move your right foot a little forward or a little out to the side. Or you have the option to walk your front hand further up the leg. It doesn't have to be entirely on the foot. Firm the back leg and you can either walk the hands out to the side or right hand on the shin, open the left arm to the sky. Revolve triangle, in my humble opinion, is quite an advanced asana. It's a balance, it's a side bend, it's a deep twist. There is some hamstring situation happening. There's a lot going on in this shape. Exhale and settle the hands down to the floor. And step up to table pose again, please. Pivot on your right leg, just a little bit this time, just a little bit, top of the foot or toes curl under, and you're going to float your left leg up, come into the fingertips of your left hand. So, walk your hand forward, scoop the belly in, and maybe reach. Broaden your low back. Broaden your low back with your breath. You can experiment with two things here. One, just reaching. And two, stacking and reaching. Exhale, lower down. Take a little space between the knees again and shake it out all the way back to child's pose. Rest your forehead to the ground.
less stable that way. So create this long line. Maybe stack shoulder over shoulder. You guys like all the shaking. Enjoy it. <laughs> it's a good sign. Exhale, please lower down. And next side. So we're going to get a little funky with it. But you, you would be so fun in this. Come into the camera range. Feel free to pull your yoga mat up. Um, oh, my mat. Feel free, yeah. So Adrian and I are going to face each other. But we're going to start in the same exact way. Table pose. Thank you. 
explain the downward facing dog one again. How's the audio? Can you guys hear okay? Slightly. So your pelvis stays level to the floor as opposed to the wild thing where you reach the leg way high and then you flip it. So in wild thing, you're, you're, all, about, you're all about the fire hydrant, right? Mm -hmm. Happy, happy chihuahua shape. In this one, we're looking more side body. So maybe experiment with lengthening and then come into the opposite fingertips and then bend a little to this standing knee leg. So your option, there's an option to put the foot to the floor or to practice your ninja hover. Okay? Try the other side. So again, if you were in table pose, you take the leg up to hip height, and then this time it's the right leg, and it just goes straight across, opposite side, toes tuck, big breath into the side body, and you walk your hand to the left. Back leg is straight. If you're choosing the second path, you'll start down dog. Float this foot, keep the hips squared. Come onto your right fingertips, bend your standing knee, and just experiment with that side body long. the opposite. 
certain age. So just notice if you have that tendency, zip it up, go on your internal capsule, scoop the belly, lift the knee, and then take the inner ankle up. Try to hold it up using the external rotators of your hip. And then lean down, catch the foot. Or tiptoe to the floor, cup the calf, or high up the thigh. Put your hands on the bony parts of your pelvis. And square that to the front of your yoga mat. So your knee is going to be at a diagonal. Your thigh will be at a diagonal in front of you. Inhale, left arm reaches. And then exhale, go ahead and lean. Draw your low ribs in and lean a little bit more. Hips way out to the side. Create some friction between the standing leg and the lifted leg. Take your time. Inhale. Rise it up. Exhale. Back to center. Alright. So listen up close. You're going to take a bit of space between your feet now. And you might want to watch this one round. It's just confusing or can be confusing. We're going to go into the Ganesha trunk twist. And we'll be taking opposite arm to opposite leg, opposite arm over. Now this arm that's over, I'm going to end up looking under it. Elbows pull in, knees bent, and I look under. Okay. Should feel pretty good. Anyone need to see that again? So, reach down. Let's all do the same side this first round. That will make my instructions easier. So, right arm over to the left shin, upper shin. Bend your knees. And then take the left arm and cross the left arm over upper right shin. Elbows pull apart from each other, so it's like you're trying to elbow out to the side. Try to push your elbows to the side. And then start to lean forward and lean, uh, twist to the left. And look under that gorgeous left arm of yours. As you do this, you may be able to straighten your legs. The elephant chunk. Gorgeous. It stretches one side body, but it compresses the other. Yeah, it may. Mm -hmm. Slowly release. And then inhale. Halfway up. You probably don't need to come all the way up. And then exhale. The left arm is going to catch the right shin first up close to the knee. Right arm crosses, knees are bent. Touch the left shin. And start to pull the elbows away from one another to the sides. And start to twist. You're twisting to the right knee. Looking out under the right arm. torso back just a little bit more. And then exhale, come back down towards the floor. Inhale, halfway up. Wiggle your feet to hip distance and then bend through the knees. Inhale, all the way up. Palms together overhead. Over your heart. Let's cross left thigh Keep it really simple this time. Inhale up. Exhale, fold forward. So yogis, depending on how um, how willing and pliable your hamstrings are in this moment, you may be able to release your hands from whatever they're on and hook your hands behind the head, interlacing your fingers. Would mean the worst thing afterwards that you can come and buy. Is that 
it doesn't feel good to you, or if it's not available to you because you're using your hands for stability, then keep your hands on the floor or on the legs. And my mind was blown yesterday when I heard the household. The inhale, reach halfway up. Hands to your hips. Inhale, rise all the way up. And switch sides. Right leg over. Thigh crosses high up over thigh. Beam the heart. Exhale, fold. Melting down. Keeping your legs as straight as reasonable. So your number one priority here is probably going to be your spine. And for that, you want to bend your knees. We also want to notice a bit of sensation, a bit of quality on the outside of the hips. You have the option to interlace your fingers, hook them behind your head, and enjoy a little gentle traction to your spine. Come on. You can turn it up and down, guys, if you want. Is there anybody out here from the theater tent? All the acro yogis. And then inhale. Please rise. Come on. Lift your heart. Press your palms together over your heart. And then come to the front of your yoga mat.
rise up. Reach your comfortable seat. So we'll close with either. You can come into Shavasana shape flat on your back. We can stay seated and we will do alternate nostril breathing. So to do alternate nostril breathing, you'll, you'll uh, bring your right hand to the sky. So right hand, and your first finger and your middle finger to the middle of your palm. You're gonna close off your right nostril. Breathe in through the left. Close off your left nostril. Breathe out through the right. So you use the ring finger and the thumb alternately. through the right nostril if you haven't already. Close it off. Exhale through the left. And at some point, please close your eyes. Inhale left. Close it. Exhale right. Inhale right. Close it. Exhale left. Continuing at your own pace. Whether you're practicing your pranayama, your alternate nostril breathing, or you've laid down for shavasana, this is a practice. You might notice there's some noise in the background. There's some distraction. out through the legs and the arms. And then exhale, draw your knees into your chest if you're on your back. Rock a little side to side, rocking and landing to the right side. Please raise up to a comfortable seat. Bring our palms together over the heart. Remembering our presence with all other living things, all other entities in the whole universe. Close with one ohm. Deep, full breath in. In, starts in just a month in Spain and this is an anatomy studies yoga retreat so it'll be kind of like what we did today but I'll talk a little bit more about the body charts that we're actually moving. I have a Memorial Day yoga retreat in Maryland and I have some cards already for that 
and I have an online yoga anatomy mentorship that starts in like nine days. It's called Yoga Anatomy Academy, and Tracy did it. Do it, do it, do it. You have access for life, and it's 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 going to be really really powerful. And I also recorded the session, so if you feel good in your body right now and you'd like me to send you the recording. Please put your name on this uh, list up here. Even if you're already on my list, if you put your name on here, you'll get the, you'll be sure to get the email. Um, and if you just want to be on my list, but you're not sure if you're going to sit through a whole video, you can also come up here and put your, um, put your name down. And you can grab a card. So I have this. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Lovely. Thanks so much.